Now, before we get started on this video, I just want to say this was not meant to be a comparison or anything of the sort like that. I wasn't intending to compare different manifolds. I wasn't intending to repeat the process a whole bunch of times. Uh, it's just kind of what played out in this scenario. The manifold that I started out with was um, manufactured inappropriately, I guess. I, I would guess it skipped um, quality control or something of the sorts. And I ended up removing that manifold after installation, after I realized how bad it was, and um, going with a different manifold again. So this video wasn't meant to be like that. So the, the portion of the video that you see of the actual process of removing the old manifold and installing the new one, that is using the manifold that I chose not to keep. The process is still all the same, um, and I do and I will talk about the differences between them and why I swapped and what the issues were and the one that I ended up sticking with at the end. So uh, I guess let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome to Sloth Fab Garage. Um, we finally got a break from putting together some steering box skids and we're still waiting on suspension parts. So we're gonna do something else today. That is a brand new set of headers for my 4.0. Um, this particular set is from Pro Tuning Lab. They are not super expensive and um, as you can see they don't have the flex joints like a factory manifold does. I kind of expect them to crack um, but for the price I'm kind of willing to take a risk. We're going to see what they do, how they hold up. Um, but this video is mostly going to be about putting them in, install, tips, tricks, stuff like that. It's not a super hard job. Um, it is kind of a little bit of a pain just because everything is kind of so jammed in there, but overall not super difficult. You don't need a ton of tools, um, but yeah, let's get after it. All right, well, the first two things you're gonna to wanna to do to pull off your exhaust manifold um, is you're gonna to need to pull off the uh, bolts that hold the manifold to the downpipe and if you watched my uh, oil pan video or not I had to pull that off anyway to do the um, to take the oil pan off and do the oil pump and all that stuff so mine's already off um, where that is is right here so you can see there's my exhaust manifold and there's the flange and if I can rotate this up This is the other side of that flange and my downpipe. So, um, usually there are two bolts up to the bottom and then nuts on the top. A lot of the time, because of the heat cycles in there, they do get very, very stuck. Um, they kind of almost weld themselves in place. So it's usually you just end up breaking bolts, trying to take those off which when I did it, I just avoided the whole process and cut them off right from the start. It was easier and most new headers will come with new bolts anyway. If not, run down to the store, grab a couple bolts, make your life a whole lot easier. So the first thing you're gonna do is pop that off. Um, you don't really need to move your exhaust anymore. Um, if you can squish it back a little bit, it helps to give you extra room to get stuff in and out of there, um, but not really necessary. I'm also going to be doing my O2 sensors while I'm in here because my whole exhaust is getting redone. So I'm pretty sure these sensors have been in there for the last 25 years. So um, the sensor plug is right here, right after the flange. That's where the sensor actually runs into the exhaust. This is my upstream. Um, and that attaches up here in the engine bay and a fuel rail just over from that. That's this plug right here. Um, there's actually a little metal tab there. See if I can get more light in there. There's a little metal tab at the end right here and it's usually um, attached to that. Mine is broken off so mine's just been zip tied there which is fine. But here's your plug. You're gonna have the wires running down. I just snipped my wires, made it a lot easier to work with. And there we go. I believe that's supposed to have a clip on it, but I believe that's also broken on this. So 
overall that was a lot easier for me than it probably should have been. So I've got the O2 sensor off, I've got the downpipe off, and now we just got the manifold. So let's take a look at the underside and see what we're going to need to do to actually pull the whole thing. Alright, so underneath here, let's see if we can get some light in some kind of usable way here. Alright, so the first one you can see is right there. That's going to be your first bolt and there's going to be six total bolts along the bottom here. So there's one there. If you look up in between here, there's another one over here. Um, on the other side, there's one out on the end over here, right there. There's another one just behind the flex portion there. There's one kind of right behind where all these tubes come together, which is a pain. Um, and then, can't even see, oh, there's another one right behind where these tubes come together. Um, and then obviously one over here behind that bellow as well. So one on each end, one kind of behind each bellow, and then one behind where either of these tubes come together. So besides the end ones, the rest of them are not really all that fun to get to. Um, they're kind of a pain. They are all 9 sixteenths. Um, you just want to be careful. You don't want to snap any of these off because they're into the side of the head. Um, and that would cause you a whole lot more work if you ended up snapping those. So heat if you have to, um, penetrating fluid if you can to let them soak. Um, but there's those six on the bottom. And then there is five more up on top. So there's again one on this end, one way on the other end over there. Um, one about a third of the way in same thing over there and then there is one just kind of right in the middle here as well so what i'm going to do to kind of help this along is i'm going to pull my intake off i'm just going to get it out of the way and i guess that's all i'm going to do for the time being the power steering pump is attached to the intake manifold and the intake manifold will be coming off with this just inherently because all the bolts are shared so at minimum, I am going to pop my belt off just so that I don't have a bunch of strange tension pulling stuff. Um, so I'll pop the belt, pop the intake, and then we'll start going to town on these bolts and see if we can get all of them loose without um, breaking anything. So I popped the uh, intake off, which is just a simple flat blade um, and just straight up. Um, so that pops off easy, not really anything you have to worry about there. Some of these other hoses um, and lines may have to get disconnected, just depending on whether you can sneak it out through the bottom, I might be able to do that. Um, the last one I did, um, I could not get it out to the bottom, so I basically disconnected this stuff up here, all the drive stuff, um, and then I believe I was able to just kind of pull the manifold off to this side and sneak the exhaust manifold up through the top so we'll see I might end up having to do that here but I think I've got enough room to sneak it out to the bottom because I don't have much stuff going on down there right now so we're gonna try that um, as for the belt the you can do it a couple different ways there is an idler pulley here which you can just pull off um, there is a tensioner bolt somewhere in here right here off the side of the bracket for um, the power steering pump here there's a little bolt right here and that moves this pulley up and down um, so you loosen the pulley itself down here the another idler pulley or I guess that's the tensioner pulley technically and then you use this to move that pulley up and down taking tension off the belt what I do just because it's really simple and I don't have to reset anything is I loosen the top bolt on my alternator here and then I just pull the bottom bolt out and that allows the alternator to swing like this and I can swing in far enough that it takes tension off the belt enough that I can pull it off of one of the pulleys and then they were good to go and then when it goes back together I simply just reroute it and pull the 
um, alternator back over, slide the bolt through, and everything is back at the same tightness that it was before. I don't have to readjust the belt or anything like that. So that's that's how I do it. Really simple. Those are both 15 millimeter if you want to do it that way. I believe that this tensioner is also 15 millimeter. Yes, it is. And let's see if I can get a wrench in here and find out if this is as well. I don't actually remember if that one is or not. But that is also 15 millimeters. So whether you want to do this tensioner pulley, that tensioner pulley, um, either, I guess, either pulley, tensioner pulley, this adjuster, or if you want to do it the way I did, those are all going to be 15 millimeter. So that's pretty simple. But now that I've got everything kind of loose, I'm going to go after those um, 11 bolts that are holding on the manifolds and we'll see how well that goes. Well, the top ones are off. That's these five right here. They've got kind of a funny concave convex washer on them. Um, what I used for those is I used this offset box end to break them all free. And I do recommend at least using a box end to break them free. Um, just because it's really hard to get a socket on them straight and you really don't want to strip them out. So it's also really hard to get a socket into most of them anyway. Um, this is really kind of the only one, maybe the middle one is or the second one in on this side as well. The rest of them I don't think you can. So I used an offset box end to get them broken free. Um, and then I used just a ratcheting box end to get them looser. Um, the ones I could reach, lots of extension with a swivel head. And then my fingers. The worst one was definitely the middle one right in here just because there's not much room. I guess if you pulled the fuel rail, it'd be a lot easier, but I'm trying to remove as little as possible while I do this. So those five are out. Um, the very end one was also a little bit of a pain, but not terrible. It's just mostly because there's not much room against the firewall to work in there. I do have a one inch motor lift in here, so that might make a little bit of a difference. But if I remember the other one that I did wasn't um, too much different and that one didn't have a motor lift. So uh, the top five are out and now we're going to jump down to the bottom ones although I might grab this one on the end here while I'm still up here since I can see that so nicely. So I'm going to do that one and then we'll jump down and see how the bottom ones go. Alright well all the rest of them are out. Um, this one on this end on the lower portion I was able to get that from up here um, which was really nice. And the one on the other end which is also a stud um, actually pulled out of the head, which is okay. Nothing really went wrong with that. So when it goes back in, I'll just throw a little bit of Loctite on there um, and clean this up so that next time this needs to come off, um, hopefully it doesn't pull the stud, it pulls the nut. The rest of them are just bolts like at the top and those all came relatively easy. Um, let me show you how I got to each one here. So, the two over on this end, which one over there, one right about there. Um, both of those I just broke free with a fixed box end and then used a ratcheting box end to get those off. Uh, the one up there at the very end, the stud, that one um, I got from the top, like I mentioned. The three in the middle here that are kind of wrapped in the tubes up here, I just used a. Uh, A 3 ace wrench with a small extension and a short well on there and I was able to kind of just hit right between the tubes to get to each of those. Uh, the last one I did was the one over the forward bellows here. That was the most stuck one but none of them were really all that bad thankfully. When I pulled that one loose um, the whole thing kind of shifted a little bit here. Um, and I'm guessing that's because I don't have the stud on this side. I only have the one stud over there, which is holding this whole thing right now. I'm pretty sure I could just kind of pop it off. So let's see if we can do just that. Now I'm going to try to get it off and get it out from down here. But I don't think this engine mount is going to allow me to do that. Um, I really don't see any particular way that this could really at all come out down here without pulling that engine mount. Um, I don't have enough room to push that side up and pull this side down 
So I think we're gonna have to break the uh, the exhaust the intake manifold free, um, and I might be able to just push the intake manifold up a little bit or pull it out away enough that I can push the forward side of the exhaust manifold up and then just kind of bring it down through the gap here between the uh, mount and the firewall here. I think I can kind of just twist it and bring it down if I can pull the intake manifold away from the head a little bit. So I'm gonna do that. I'm probably gonna pull this front drive shaft off as well just to make it a little bit easier to snake everything through here. So. I'm gonna pull all those things free, then we'll see if we can manage to wiggle it out of here. All right, well, the back side of the manifold is free. Probably can't tell, but um, I do have movement on that end, so that's not a big deal. The front end is still tied in. Um, this bracket here, with all the adjustment, keys off of the water pump housing down there. So I'm gonna pull off the two bolts, there's one at the top here and then one at the bottom that kind of go right around this um, tensioner pulley here. Those are both 916 so I'm going to pull those two out, they're pretty short, and then I should be able to pull the whole assembly manifold over enough that I can kind of snake the uh, exhaust manifold up in there and get everything out. Alright, so it was simple enough to pull those two off. Um, there is actually a third one, you can see that bracket that runs across there that runs from the back of the tensioner pulley bracket here to the block so that's also 9 16 so that's pretty easy to get to so those three come out um, and then this whole thing just kind of is free now um, i don't want to put too much tension on anything so i'm going to try to do as minimal movement as i can i've got a bungee cord right here holding the bracket up to one of these supports um, and i think there's enough play in there that i can wiggle everything around from underneath and pull that out without getting too crazy with the disconnecting stuff here so we're gonna give that a shot and hopefully it works well you saw me struggling with that and that's about all I got out of that was a bunch of struggle. So, um, there was not really a way to get it out from the bottom because of all the wires going to the fuel rail and a um, bunch of other stuff. You could pull the fuel rail, you could pull um, the throttle body, a handful of other things off of the manifold here. And then you could probably squish it over enough to maybe be able to get it out the bottom, but you need a lot of room. Um, there's just a lot of engine related things in the way down there and it just wasn't going to work. So I came back up here, decided to do it the right way. Uh, first thing I did was pull the power steering pump and that bracket assembly off of the manifold. Those are half inch bolts. Boom, boom, boom. Those pull out. If you've got the factory pulley on here, one of the holes will allow you to pull those bolts out right through. You can get a socket in there and pull those out which is really nice. Um, I don't have that and I didn't have a pulley puller, so I struggled a little bit with that. But that's off. Um, I did connect, disconnect um, my vacuum hose up here to the brake booster. Um, another vacuum hose here. My fuel system is a little bit different from stock, so I'm not 100% sure what's all over here, but I'm disconnecting a handful of things off of the uh, inside of the fenders here. And then I just pulled my intake tube off completely um, just to get it out of the way. And now, let's see if I can do this with the camera pointing in the right direction. You can see that I've still got some stuff attached in the back, but I can get this up nice and far now. Um, enough that I could probably get this out of here if I have a second set of hands. So I'm going to go find a second set of hands, um, slide this out, um, slide the new one in, and then just kind of rest everything back in there. I do have to pull off the uh, old um, gasket in here and put the new one on yet. So there's going to be a little bit of cleanup involved, and I do want to get that other stud on the other side so that holds 
that in place. So got a little bit of cleanup and an extra set of hands, and then we'll get back to it once um, once we're kind of set up and ready to put things back together. Well, you can see what we got difference-wise here. Um, there is a little bit of difference in the overall shape of the tubes and where they connect. I'm not 100% sure um, what kind of difference it's going to make. For sure we're going to get a different kind of sound, that's for sure. Um, so that'll be interesting to see what the actual difference is. Um, I do have a new gasket as well. But after doing a little bit of research, I am going to wrap these new headers. Uh, I may have enough heat wrap laying around yet. If not, I'll have to order some and put this on hold a little bit. Um, but uh, I am going to wrap them. It seems that it'll help uh, manage bay temperatures a little bit. I don't have any issues with um, vapor lock or anything like that. I do have my rail heat wrapped and my intake tube is heat wrapped as well. But it does get pretty hot in here with these full one piece aluminum fenders. Um, it keeps a lot of heat in here. I'm running a 185 thermostat um, and a new water pump and all that stuff, but it does get pretty hot in here sometimes. So anything I can do to kind of keep that heat out. So we're going to give it a shot. We're going to wrap these. Um, we'll see if I've got anything laying around or enough anyway to get these wrapped. And then we'll get that back in place and bolt it back up and see what it looks like. All right, so now we are kind of ready to go ahead and get this all wrapped up. I did order some heat wrap. I actually ordered two rolls of it. I'm not sure how much I'm going to end up wrapping. I'm sure I'll use quite a bit wrapping the header itself, um, but I'll probably wrap the, the mid pipe that wraps around the oil pan there, and then just to get it at least that far, I might end up wrapping the whole thing. I don't know. We'll see. But I had a little bit here. This was what I had laying left around, um, but that was not going to be nearly enough. So I just bought a couple rolls. They're two 25-foot rolls, maybe. I don't remember. Um, I'll throw a link to this stuff in the description to the video. They also came, each roll came with um, a handful of these stainless steel zip ties, which are really nice for this stuff because it's the best way to kind of hold them on and they lock really nicely. Um, I did go ahead and buy a big pack of stainless steel zip ties as well, just because I know I'm going to end up needing more and using more than they give you because I think they'll give you maybe a dozen or something like that. Um, and then I also ordered some V-band clamps. I don't know, if you don't know what these are, check into them. Um, it's a super cool exhaust clamp. Let's see if this is loose enough that I can work it off here. Um, and it's designed so that you can take your exhaust pieces apart much easier. So this ring with the flange on it gets welded to your exhaust tube and then the flange sticks out. And then you take the two flange sides Stick them together like that so that'd be your two exhaust pieces coming together just like this um, and there's a little lip on the inside here too a little lip here and a little cut out on the inside so they key together really nicely um, and then you just use this v-band clamp to pull everything together so the way my exhaust is or will be run underneath there it's kind of pinched together really tight um, I don't have a lot of room, so this will make that really easy. I'll be able to run my first section basically up to the skid plate, throw a V-band clamp on there, run it through the skid plate, run another V-band clamp, and then the tail piece. So that'll be really helpful, especially if I have to remove stuff to repair something or change anything in the future. Um, I've used those on builds before and they're just way easier than anything else. You don't ruin the pipes um, with standard clamp style stuff. So we are gonna get to getting some heat wrap on this and see how it looks and then once that's all wrapped up we'll throw it back in the jeep heat wrapping is not an extremely hard process but in the case of headers it's very nice to have a second set of hands so that you can get your wraps nice and tight i do highly recommend gloves at a minimum as heat wrap is made from fiberglass which can cause notable discomfort if you get it on your skin i would also recommend wearing a sweatshirt and some pants that you don't mind either throwing away or washing right away just to help cover your skin. And I would also recommend working in an area that's very easily cleanable because fiberglass tends to get 
all over the place when you're working with it like this, especially working it between the tubes of the headers. Um, we had quite a pile of fiberglass both on the table and on the floor afterwards. Well, after a bath in fiberglass, we have this all wrapped up. Uh, there's a couple spots that didn't turn out super nice. Top of this one didn't turn out super nice, but that one's pretty good. I mean, it all ended up being okay. And as this, when this gets hot, it'll grab onto there pretty good. So overall, it turned out all right. Um, it doesn't get seen anyway. It's kind of buried in there, so I'm not too worried about it. The only spot that didn't end up with wrap on it was a tiny little spot right there, which that's kind of a non-issue really. Um, this was my first manifold, so it didn't turn out perfect, but I think for the most part everything is covered and I think it should hold just fine. It's not as clean as I would have liked it, but Again, everything is getting hidden. You don't really see this. So as long as it keeps the temps down, then we should be good. I think I would have, um, if I was doing it again, I would have done these two first. Just short little runs, followed by this one and this one. And then take this one in and do this base wrap off of it. And then do what we did for the last one here. And we took this one in, did the base wrap off of this where they came together into the three to one here. And then the two to one, we just also carried this same. So this one wrap goes here, through here, and then over the whole thing. And I think there'd probably be a better way to do this collection point here. Um, if you did it in a couple different loop, loops like that, I think you could probably get it to work just fine. But again, overall, everything seemed to lay okay. Um, we got pretty good coverage everywhere except the little spot in the back. So now the next thing is to get it back in here um, and that really should be about as hard as it was to get the old one out which wasn't too bad so we're gonna have somebody hold this up and out of the way and then we should be able to slide that in there the new gasket here will go on I did end up pulling the stud here if you remember out of the other side and I wasn't able to separate the nut the stud from the bolt or the nut so that's just going to stay as it is, but that's okay because if you look, there is a nub right here, and there's another one buried in the back there, but right here, there's a nub, and that is to kind of align everything. So that will sit in one of these two holes here. I'm guessing it's this one right here. So that'll sit right there, and the other one will be right here. So between those two and the one bolt I have over here, um, we should be good. So we'll get the manifold in there first so I don't damage this on the way through. Once the manifold is just resting under there, throw this on and then bolt up the manifolds together and we should be good to go. It shouldn't be too bad. Now with the exhaust manifold actually in place, um, we're able to rest this kind of in place a little bit better. What's holding the manifold on right now is this stud here and the lower stud on the other end. And that's really all that's there. So it's just kind of in place. We're not tied up against the block or anything. This gives us a chance to make sure that this gasket is doing its job. It's not crinkled, everything's sitting smooth. I did clean the mating surface along the block for that gasket before we put that on. So that should be all good. Uh, the next part is basically to throw all of the different bolts in. So I went ahead and cleaned these ones, which were dirty. These ones are actually pretty clean yet. And I do have a little bit of ARP um, assembly lube yet, so I'm going to throw a little bit of that on each one of these when I put them in. And other than that, it's kind of just reassembly at this point. Um, I don't know the torque specs off the top of my head, so I'll look those up and get this all torqued back down and nice and flat. And then once everything's back in the way it should be, I'll give you a look of what it looks like from the top and the bottom. Well, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is that the manifold is in place. Um, both manifolds are bolted up. Everything's kind of hooked back together. I have some accessories to put back together here yet. 
um, which unfortunately won't be happening. What I ran into in the process of putting this all back together was a couple of fitment issues. And the first one starts out right here where the, let's see if I can get some light up here. If you look where the tube, the first tube here off of the exhaust manifold um, runs right underneath the intake manifold right here. There's a fin on the underside of the intake manifold and that tube is too close to it. So I actually had to grind a little bit off of that fin on the intake manifold to just get the intake manifold to sit down and line up with the ports. Um, so that was issue number one, which wasn't really a huge deal, just a couple minutes with a grinder, but still something you shouldn't have to do, but not, not overly a big deal. However, the next issue is a little bit more of a big deal. If you take a look right here, I pulled my hoses out of the way so we can kind of get a better peek. Um, that flange is actually touching the engine block. And not only is it touching now, it's kind of hard to tell, but you can kind of see that I ground that side flat already. Um, I took a probably a good eighth out of it just to see if that would give me enough clearance between the block and the flange that it wouldn't be touching. I didn't want any pressure on there. and. It's just barely touching now to the point where I would be comfortable leaving it. There's not really any pressure on it right now. But the problem is, is that that is so close there that this next section of pipe, the flange on this, um, it's a little difficult because the hoses are in the way, but the flange, you can see this has a flange on it as well this flange won't actually seat on there. So I guess what it comes down to is I'm gonna be probably pulling this whole thing back out, unwrapping it and ordering a different set of headers because I can't run this. Uh, it's not even that I don't feel comfortable running it. I don't think that I can get a good enough seal on here um, that I would be able to and I'm very very it's snug up against the side of this um, that doesn't give me any room for my lines here for my cooler lines I mean it's just it's not good fitment it looks pretty um, and in theory it would have worked great but it just doesn't fit I don't really know what the company they must not have a super stringent quality control measures. Um, but then again, it is a very cheap manifold and I knew that and I knew I was taking a risk when I bought it. So um, this is one time I'm paying for it, I guess. So that'll have to all come back apart. I'm not gonna mess with it now. Everything is loose. Everything comes apart pretty easily. So I'm just gonna leave it the way it is right now until the new manifold comes in. Um, not sure what I'm gonna order yet probably end up going with the banks just because it's warranty it's just it is what it is so didn't really want to go that route for this one but now i'm another 150 dollars down that path so i might as well just go there now um but yeah i mean i mean i don't know i'll give this company a call and see if they want to do anything about this or what the issue is I mean I don't really I don't know if this is how good the fitment is I don't necessarily know how good the um, fabrication of the manifold itself is gonna be is it gonna crack really fast um, are the joints solid I don't I don't know how much I trust it at this point um, the other thing is it's kind of hard to tell but this manifold is actually a little bit thinner the plate here is a little bit thinner than the factory manifold, so these washers on here don't sit perfectly flat, which is 
fine, that's not really a big deal. It was just something that I didn't notice right away. Um, doesn't really seem to be really that big of a deal. Had this been thicker, maybe it would hold off from the block just enough. I don't know. I still think I would have had to grind some stuff off of there. But, um, I mean, overall, it looked nice and all that, but it doesn't fit. So, we, I guess what we're doing now is we're going to do a big cleanup here because the shop kind of became a disaster in this whole process. But we're going to clean up. Um, I'll give that company a call tomorrow, see what they want to do about that, if anything. Um, and then I guess we'll get something a little bit higher quality on the way that hopefully will solve this problem. So I gave Pro Tuning Lab a call, which is who I bought the headers from originally, and I got some automated service. Um, but I shot them an email and describing my problem, I laid everything out and the process I went through for everything, and they were super helpful. So they basically, um, I, in my original email, I had just requested a refund, um, nothing more, and I had included some pictures of the issues as well. So they basically just asked for um, me to confirm and prove that I had actually made the purchase through them, which I was able to do. And then after a couple more emails, um, they issued me a refund um, without any haggle, which was really, really nice on their end. So their customer service really kind of made up for the issue with the product but I wasn't going to go through the whole process again just to find out that I ended up with another defective manifold. So I went with a Banks for my second one. Um, I did call Banks beforehand to make sure that they had solved their um, issues with, I know that they had cracking issues in the past, so I wanted to make sure that they had solved those. And then I also wanted to ask about heat wrap, and unfortunately they do um, void warranty for heat wrap, which sucks, but not the end of the world. Um, and they didn't have any in stock, but I was able to get a hold of someone at Summit Racing, and they did have one in stock. And so two days later, I had a brand new Banks Torx Tubes manifold in hand. Well, the process is complete. The second manifold, the Banks, is now in place, and everything is mounted back up properly. I've even got the belt back on and everything kind of bolted up. The fitment on that is significantly better. I'll give you a quick peek down here. You can see the amount of gap that we have there between the um, engine block and the manifold. So that's what we should be having. I am able to get the downpipe on there and that's what was really important. I don't have any adverse pressure pushing on that manifold, um, providing cracks or anything like that. I did call Banks before I even placed the order for that, and they told me that it does um, void the warranty if I heat wrap that, which is unfortunate, but um, it is what it is. I don't wanna void that warranty on that manifold specifically, so I will be coming up with some kind of little divider between the two manifolds to try to keep heat off of the intake manifold as those do get pretty hot but I probably will still be wrapping the remainder of the manifold or the remainder of the exhaust as well. Um, just to take a quick look at what we had here this is the one that was wrapped and removed. Uh, a couple notes this flange was a little thinner as I mentioned before that may have been part of the problem, I'm not sure, but that's pretty standard on a lot of aftermarket ones. They are three eighths instead of half. So I'm thinking that the tubes were just bent wrong or maybe they were welded wrong or the, the collectors were welded just a little bit tweaked. But if we flip over to the back side here, you can see how much I really ground down there. I mean, it was round just like this up around here. And I ground down quite a bit there. Um, and really feel comfortable going any more than that. And even with how much I took off of there, I was still having a lot of pressure up against the side of the engine, which I didn't like at all. And on top of that, I couldn't even fit the flange on here with the seal. Um, so it, it just simply was not gonna work. 
but now that everything is back together, um, I guess I will take a look at everything, make sure that I didn't miss anything. If there's any other odd little notes, I'll add those following this. And I guess that wraps it up. So I appreciate you guys watching, sticking with me on this. It's kind of a, a little bit of a hassle, but I'll throw all the links to everything in the description to this video. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. See you on the next one.